Look at Ezekiel chapter 22, and beginning in verse 23, the Bible reads, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now remember, we're talking about being in a carnal church atmosphere, okay? This is just an extended application. Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law. They have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. They have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profane among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get honest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. You don't get any more carnal than what's happening right now in the book of Ezekiel. You have prophets who are devouring souls. You have prophets taking treasures, making widows. Is that, is that murder? Yeah. You have priests violating the law, doing violence against the law, hurting and harming the perfect law of God. They are profaning holy things. There's no difference between what's clean and unclean. The princes, the leaders at this time, they're like wolves. They're destroying souls. They're gaining dishonestly. They're seeking after dishonest gain. It says here that there's, there's um, vanity and divining lies coming from the mouth of the spiritual leaders. And yet look at here in verse 30. And I sought for a man among them. It doesn't say I saw for a man that had nothing to do with them, that was in a different city, that was five minutes away from that situation, but wanted nothing to do with it. It said, I saw for a man among them. Among who? Among the prophets that are killing people. Among the priests that are violating the law and, and not have any discernment between clean or unclean. Among the princes that are dishonestly gaining, ripping people off, robbing people. God says, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. And I should not destroy it, but I found none. I found none in this carnal, wicked, no good, rotten, sinful, savage situation. God is still seeking for just one man. Just one man to stand in the gap. And yet we say, ah, I can't go to that church. It's too carnal. It's too wicked. It's too, it's too wrong. It's too savage. It's, there's, there's nothing good over there. There's nothing good in this situation. Yet God's seeking for just one man to be there to stand in the gap. And I will tell you that there ain't no church in this area that is bad, is what's being described here. Yeah. There is nothing as savage where literally the leaders are killing people making widows. We have not seen that type of debauchery yet Amen. in Canada, North America, anywhere. We haven't seen a congregation, we haven't seen a land, a group, that wicked. And yet God still wants and desires that there would be just one righteous man within that. So don't tell me that you don't go to church because all the churches are wicked. Look at this example. Amen. These things are written for our examples upon whom the ends of the earth are come. If we look to this, we say, hey, God wants a carnal world, a carnal atmosphere, a carnal situation to be kept, to be protected, to be made up in the gap, to have someone who is righteous, someone who is good, someone who is decent to stand in that gap. That's our context. That is our application. And when there is that carnal, wicked, terrible church situation, where is our man too often? Where is the man that God's looking for? That man's sitting at home. That man's sleeping in on Sundays. That man's just waiting to download the next sermon. That man's um, maybe getting to his Bible reading sometime around noon. That man is not standing in the gap where he's supposed to be. Amen. That man is at home on the internet trolling. That man is at home being, um, being just, just lazy. That man is being a soul wiener. Instead of being in church, he's going to go out and he's going to knock on doors and try to get numbers and try to puff himself up and post it up. It's like, glory to me and God was there too, I guess. 
Right? He's trying to lift himself up by spiritual actions. Well, I prayed today. I read my Bible today. I went soul winning today. I'm just as good as anybody else. But you weren't in church. Right? You weren't in church. You weren't standing in that carnal, wicked gap. That's where God wants you. He wants a righteous. He sought for a man. Now look, because he found none, therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord. Because someone wouldn't stand in that gap. Because someone who was a righteous believer said there are no good churches, which is a lie. There's just no churches that meet their fanciful standards. Right? They need to, hey, that's, that's the same cry, the same, the same call, the same, the same message that I'm saying in here is, is, hey, loser, get in church. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to stand in that gap. Don't go saying that there's nothing. We have the most carnal situation we could find, and yet God said, hey, go there and be a blessing. What a blessing it would have been for those people if there was that one man standing in the gap and God withheld his wrath. He withheld his punishment. He withheld his correction and destroyed it not. Did not recompense. He extended grace because one man was there. This is even better than Sodom and Gomorrah. He just wanted what? 